This video is on the musculoskeletal system and is for A-level PE. It will include skeleton, joints, muscles, muscular contractions and movement. So here we've got a diagram of the human skeleton. To the left you can see something referring to the axial skeleton. So this includes bones which kind of make up the core of the human body. So it includes the skull, vertebral column, the ribs and the sternum. To the right hand side you can see something which refers to the appendicular skeleton so that includes bones such as the skull, shoulder girdle, hip girdle, leg and arm bone so most of those bones which are responsible for movement. Down at the bottom right you can see two words one which says pronation one which says supination this basically refers to the positioning of the hands. So an easy way to remember this is if we've got our palms facing upwards, they are in a supine position. So we can remember that by referring to holding a cup of soup. We could only hold a cup of soup if our palms were facing upwards. Equally, if we were to turn our hands over, we would pronate them. And that refers to pronation. So right now our skeleton in the middle is standing in a supine position with the palms facing upwards and towards us. When we're looking at the human skeleton with regards to a level P it's important that we know the majority of these bones here because we're going to have to refer to them when we're talking about origins, insertions and how movement occurs. So we've got joints here so we have a few different types we have fibrous or immovable so they're bones which do not move at all and they're found in the cranium otherwise known as the skull we've got our cartilaginous or slightly movable joints so these are found in the vertebral discs so we don't get a lot of movement there because obviously we don't want to damage the spinal cord and then we've got our synovial or freely movable joints. So this is most joints which we generally refer to and talk about in PE um, and these are the ones which have the majority of the movement. A key word below there just so that you're aware is articulation and that refers to a place where two or more bones meet to form a joint. So synovial joints here we've got a diagram of a synovial joint. This could be any of our sort of major joints where movement occurs. It has been labelled with all the key elements which you need to be aware of. So we'll start off at the bottom. We've got the joint capsule down here. Now the role of the joint capsule is to keep kind of everything in place. As you can see it's the outer layer and it keeps everything nice and compact and making sure that none of that synovial fluid or the membrane spill out. Our joint cavity refers to the space between the joints. Our articular cartilage, so this is kind of our main cartilage where the movement occurs, so is responsible for shock absorption um, and stopping our bones from grinding against each other. We've got our synovial membrane here um, this is responsible for producing synovial fluid which can be found all in the joint here and that lubricates the joint and makes it nice and easy for us to move. We've got our compact bone so this is our hard part of our bone which runs along the outside. We've got our spongy bone that looks like these little air pockets all around here. This is otherwise known as cancellous bone. We've got our periosteum, which is the very outside of the bone, and this is the hardest part. Um, and we've got our medullary cavity, so it's kind of almost like a little airspace in the bones. Um, here we've got the episeal disc. That is the growth plate of the bone. So when we grow this ever so slowly, grows and grows and eventually the bones become longer and longer and that almost the whole point of us having good movement in our joints and cartilage is to avoid wearing that away. We've got our ligaments which run right on the outside so they keep everything kind of together and moving um, as one. 
so joining our bones to bones and we have something called the menisci and these just basically help the bones fit together and improve the stabilization of our joints. If we look over here on the right hand side we can see we've got three types of cartilage. Hyaline, so that sits on the end of bones so that exists for most movements at the joint. White fibro, so that's slightly flexible and that can be found in our vertebrae in our back and our yellow elastic cartilage so that's our really soft and bendy cartilage that we find in our earlobes. One further thing to be aware of is in the bottom right hand corner we can see there's two words protrusions and depressions. So protrusion just refers to an elevated part of the bone that allows for ligament attachment so if we sort of imagine that as a bone and we've got our sort of elevated bit there and that would allow ligaments to say attach to it and our depressions so same sort of concept but it goes down a little depression and again it allows ligaments to easily attach to the surface some additional work that i like to uh, do when I'm looking at this topic is to make a simple table with some key points in so we can just see the name so we've got things like protrusions depressions different types of cartilage the role so what they actually do and how they work and where they can be found if you're aware of the role and the location of all of these anatomical areas um, you'll be able to answer most questions relating to joints Synovial joint types, so you should be aware of a few of these already, but we'll go through them again. So we have ball and socket, hinge joint, pivot joint, condyloid, saddle and gliding. So if you look across to the right, you can see the different types of movement ranges that are available and an example of the articulating bones in the column after that. If you just make yourself aware of which bones are involved and the types of movements which can happen around those joints again it will increase your chances of success i've also put the locations of where these are so make yourself aware of that as well so then you can um, refer to them in any questions that you get given Movement at joints terminology. Now this is quite a long list. You may be familiar with some and less familiar with others. And there's very simple definitions next to each one of them. So I'm going to summarize them very quickly and hopefully not take up too much of your time. So abduction, bringing a limb away from the center line of the body. Adduction, so in the word adding it, bringing a limb towards the center line of the body. Flexion, decreasing of the angle at a joint. Extension, increasing the angle at a joint. Do not get flexion confused with sort of bodybuilder terminology talking about flexing all the time. They're simply just talking about muscle tension, not actually always decreasing the angle at a joint. Circumduction, a circling motion of a limb. Horizontal flexion, when the shoulder joint starts in a flexed position and then the shoulder joint moves towards the center line of the body. So the pushing up part of a bench press. Horizontal extension, when the shoulder joint moves away from the midline of the body. So when we're pulling back our shoulders when we are rowing. <clears throat> a depression, so the movement of the shoulders downwards. So for example, when we're lifting a big weight off the floor for a deadlift, our shoulders move down. Elevation, movement of the shoulders upwards, such as a shrug. Plantar flexion, pointing of the toes at the ankle joint. Dorsal flexion, pointing the foot towards the shin at the ankle joint. Eversion, turning the sole of the foot outwards, as we do often in swimming breaststroke. Inversion, turning the foot in medially. So, for example, when we're trying to curl a ball, a football with the outside of our foot. Pronation, as we spoke about earlier, turning the wrist 
downwards. So when we're trying to do a top spin shot in tennis, supination turning the hand upwards. So maybe a slice serve in tennis, a table tennis. Lateral flexion, bending sideways at our back. Hyperextension is when the joint is forced beyond its usual range. So when we're doing a Frosbury flop in high jump. Um, and often we experience hyperextension when injuries occur. And finally, rotation, so turning a structure around its long axis. So you might have seen these two kind of words in other sentences, but medial just refers to turning towards the body and lateral away from the body. So we can get medial rotation and lateral rotation. Muscular contractions. So we have two types of muscular contractions here, isometric and isotonic. So an isometric muscle contraction is when no movement occurs but muscle tension is present. So if we look at the lady on the right hand side doing the handstand, she needs a good amount of tension in the muscles in order to hold her in that position. However, there is no movement occurring within the muscles. Another example could be doing a plank. Underneath we can see we have isotonic muscle contraction, so that is when movement occurs. This can be broken into two subcategories, so concentric is the shortening of the muscle and eccentric is the lengthening of the muscle. Here we've just got to be careful about which part of the movement we are talking about. So if we're looking at the man on the right doing the bicep curl, on the upward phase of the movement his biceps will be shortening, so they will be doing the concentric movement and his triceps will be lengthening on the upward phase, so his triceps will be doing the eccentric part of the movement. Muscles of the body. So here we've got a diagram with many of the muscles of the body. Um, obviously there's a lot there and there's a lot to learn, but one thing I would say focus on is think about what key movements you need for sport and which muscles are most likely to be involved in those. So you probably have a previous knowledge of say the quadriceps and the hamstrings working together, the gastrocnemius and the tibialis anterior working together to produce movement. Um, and now as we're starting to move on, it's important that we're aware of a few more muscles and what they're paired with in order to create movement. So we've got a few here, we've got things like the trapezius, we've got things like the deltoid. So all of these muscles are very important in creating movement, for example, when we're throwing or when we're lifting weights and things like that. So it's just important to be aware of these um, and what they're paired with in order to create movement. As we know, all muscles work antagonistically together.